So Dr. Schultz, today we're talking about Gleason 7 prostate cancer. Now, there are two forms of Gleason 7, 3 plus 4 and 4 plus 3. Today we're going to focus on 4 plus 3. So first of all, can you break down the grading system for patients so they can kind of understand the difference between those two? Gleason score has been the real go-to indicator for helping people understand if it's likely that the cancer is spread outside the prostate. That is the defining issue in any cancer and just as it is in prostate cancer. Uh, if the disease doesn't spread outside the prostate, it's essentially harmless. And if it does spread outside the prostate, then it becomes a much more serious proposition. The Gleason system uh, was simplified by Dr. Epstein. Uh, he took something that used to range from six to 10, which is not a very intuitive stretch of numbers, and made it go from one to five. And he said that the, the old fashioned three plus threes are ones, the three plus fours are twos, the four plus threes are threes, the four plus fours are fours, and anything that has five in it, four plus five, five plus five, that's a level five. And as each of these uh, numbers go from one to five in the a new Epstein system, uh, the risk of there being some spread outside the prostate goes up. There are other things that predict for disease outside the prostate, how high the PSA is, uh, how extensive or large the tumor is inside the prostate, but uh, Gleason score has been the most powerful indicator. A 4 plus 3 that we're talking about is sort of in the middle of that range for the risk of spread uh, at 3. A 4 plus 3 would be a 3 out of 5. 1 out of 5 means essentially no risk of spread. 5 out of 5 means a higher risk of spread. Prostate cancer in general is a f much less malignant and much less likely to spread than other types of cancers. So even if someone has a five level risk for their Gleason score or their Epstein score, it's not a foregone conclusion that it'll ever spread, but it is more likely to spread than the other lower numbers. So is the Epstein score now present on all pathology reports coming out of major institutes, or is this something that patients have to research in order to correlate? You'll see it in most reports now. Uh, uh, there's no obligation for the different pathologists to report it in that format, but it is certainly helpful. The old 6 to 10 system, people would be diagnosed with a 6 and think that they've got uh, something that's more than halfway to 10, which is must be bad, and yet 6s, or the, what we call the new ones, really have no risk of spread whatsoever. So it's a much more useful system, but I don't think it's universally adopted, but it is commonly adopted. So I know that patients who have come to us, they are, have great concern that it's a 4 plus 3 versus a 3 plus 4. And they really think the 4 plus 3 really changes the game, which it might. Can you explain how that system works? So prostate cancer can present in more than one type, and that's why we have these, these, uh, these numbering systems. This is what the doctors are looking at under the microscope when they see a certain cellular pattern. And these are different types of prostate cancers. Uh, prostate uh, appearance that is labeled a three looks quite a bit different than a four. Threes don't spread, fours can spread. So the numbering system of three plus four means that the three is more common you know, when the pathologist looks under the microscope, and that is going to tend to define the behavior of the cancer more. Whereas if the four comes first and a four plus three, that means that the four type of prostate cancer is more common when he looks under the microscope in that individual patient, and therefore this individual is facing a somewhat higher risk that the cancer could spread outside the prostate. So when it comes to, you know, confirming a Gleason score, should somebody go get a secondary look at their biopsy and make sure that these are the correct numbers and before they decide on treatment? Since historically the Gleason score has been the most important indicator as to whether or not the cancer is likely to spread, getting an accurate read from a world-class expert makes a lot of sense. The whole Gleason system, in my opinion, has been superseded now by these new PSMA PET scans that actually measure if spread is present. In the past, we were always trying to project based on how high the PSA is and what the Gleason score is, is whether it's, the cancer is likely to have spread. But now with this new, more accurate information coming from PSMA PET scans, we can actually see if it has spread or hasn't spread. And so in my opinion, the PSMA PET scans now become the, the new most important indicator uh, as to whether the cancer is spread or not, since you're actually looking at outcome rather than a projection of outcome. So when a patient comes into your office and they have a Gleason 4 plus 3, it's confirmed, what are you looking at to do first? What's the first steps? Are you sending somebody for a PSMA to make sure that it's not spread anywhere? What are the next steps? Yes, exactly. I think that these days, um, 
it, I won't call it malpractice because malpractice is based on what the prevailing standards are. PSMAs are too new to be considered the prevailing standard, but they are so much more accurate than anything we've had in the past. I would think that everyone would want to obtain a PSMA PET scan if they have a Gleason 4 plus 3. Uh, there are certain types of 3 plus 4s where the likelihood of spread is so small that a PSMA PET scan might be overkill. But for anyone with a 4 plus 3, there is going to be some risk of spread outside the prostate. And therefore, you really want to take a look and make sure that if there is something out there, you, you find it. And of course, the PSMA PET scans then allow you to target it and treat it. The modern standard, I believe, is for all newly diagnosed patients with a 4 plus 3 to get a staging scan with PSMA PET scan technology. What would you say the survival rates are for someone who has Gleason 7 4 plus 3? Well, in this modern era, if people are doing uh, PSA screening and they get diagnosed before their PSA goes over 10, for example, their uh, survival rates are going to be excellent. 10-year survival rates are probably in the realm of 99%. Uh, that's because we have such powerful ways to treat and cure these uh, conditions. We have powerful ways to diagnose relapses if they aren't cured and to treat those individuals. And then we have powerful uh, salvage hormone therapies that can keep people in remission now for 10, 15, or 20 years. Mortality from 4 plus 3 in someone that's been uh, undergoing regular PSA screening should be close to zero. People that you hear about running into trouble usually are the ones that haven't been consistent with their PSA screening and they come in with PSAs, uh, you know, over 50 or 100 when they're diagnosed. And there are still plenty of ways to uh, treat and even cure some of those people. But for the average uh, person who does annual PSA screening, uh, mortality rates for newly diagnosed prostate cancer should be very, very low. Thank you so much for watching this video on Gleason 7 prostate cancer, specifically 4 plus 3. The reason we're bringing this to your attention is there is so much to learn in the world of prostate cancer and we want to get into the specifics for your case and your individual type so that you can learn three important things. Number one, what is your exact stage that you are at? It's important to know the details of your own medical case. Number two, researching the right treatment for you. You don't want to just be put in a run-of-a-mill kind of system. What treatment would have the best outcome for the third thing that I personally believe is the most important? Your quality of life before treatment and after treatment, no matter what that matters. I think doctors are oftentimes overloaded by the medical system and all the patients they're seeing, and a lot of times they're not sitting down and having these long form conversations with you to help you decide. So we are here to help you do that research. If you need more help and to talk to an individual to help you decide, you can contact our helpline and you can see them at pcri.org. If you would like more information about prostate cancer, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, visit our website, or call us. We appreciate being here for you. Thank you so much for trusting us.